chapter 8. In this chapter, we are going to talk about arrays. This is a pretty large and um, extensive chapter with um, a lot of details about arrays and searching and sorting using arrays and two-dimensional arrays. And uh, you know, of course, we start off with one-dimensional arrays. So we have quite a few programs um, that span this chapter. So make sure you take a look at all of them or some of them based on how you want to do it. But in order to understand this chapter and the concept of arrays, please make sure you write your own programs. So let's take a look at what we have here. This is a basic arrays. So what is array and why do we need an array? We use an array to have a list of numbers, which could be whole numbers, real numbers, and of course, a list of characters will make a string or, a, or text that um, we would want to use. So notice I have here, the first thing I have here is global constant. I have a constant cap for capacity, uh, and I've set that to 10. It's an integer. Now, um, inside my main, here's how you declare an array within square bracket to say that that is an array. So list is an array of type int, and this number within the square bracket, notice, is a constant. So it's a fixed array, and that number has to be a constant. It does not have to be a named constant like I have it here, but there has to be a number in there of some sort. And that number cannot be a variable um, because the array is created um, when at compile time, and so it, it is fixed, and it has to be defined before. It cannot be a variable that you read from the user and create at runtime. It does not work that way. So make sure you have a number, a hard-coded number, or a constant. Constants are preferred, so that way if you have to change, again, it makes a change a lot easier. Now, equals zero within curly brackets says it's going to have a set of values. They're all zero, so it's initialized. All the values are initialized to zero. And i equals 0. Now, i is just a regular integer. Notice it is an int because I have an int here in front, but there's no square bracket after, after it, so it's not an array. i is just a regular integer. So I have two variables here, an array called list of size, capacity, cap, which is 10, all initialized to 0, and i, which is initialized to 0, just a regular integer. Now, here's how we read values into the array. Read from user into the array. You tell the user, have the prompt, enter 10 whole numbers. And notice we go through a for loop. Since an array is contiguous, goes right at one after the other, we use for loops for most of the time when we work with arrays. So we start with i equals 0, and array numbering always starts at 0. If you start at 1, you miss out on one of the numbers, the first number. So you always, always start at 0 and go 1 less than, i less than cap. So if you have 10 numbers and you start at 0, you only want to go to 9. If you go to 10, you've gone over. So i less than, not less than or equal to, would be wrong. So i less than cap, i plus plus, incremented one at a time. Read the number, c in. Read it using the extraction operator, it's just a regular number, list of i. So we read list of 0, puts it in the first spot, list of 1 puts it in the second spot, and so on and so forth. It goes through this for loop and reads 10 numbers. Then we come here, and all we are doing here is again going through the same for loop notice. And we are simply printing it out by saying see out list of i. Again, the subscript. You notice the array subscript, the same one that we saw when we were talking about strings in the previous chapter. The square bracket is the array subscript. List of 0 will print the first element. See out list of 1 will print the second element. And I have a space after each number. And so we go through this for loop. And then at the end of the for loop, when we come outside, I have a new line. So all our numbers will be printed on one line with a space in between them. And finally, at the end, I have a new line. I also have another section where I output to the user backwards. So how do we print an array backwards? You start at the tail end, and you keep moving backwards. So to start at the tail end, we know that we have 10 numbers. So it goes from 0 to 9. So we want to start at 9, which is cap minus 1. 
i equals cap minus 1 and we want to keep decrementing until we hit 0 so 9 8 7 6 and so on until we get down to 0 including 0 so i greater than or equal to 0 as long as i is greater than or equal to 0 we want to keep printing and we decrement i minus minus the minute we hit 0 and we printed 0 we know we are done with our list and we don't want to go any further so that's all we're doing in this program now while I compile and run this there are a couple of things to remember array out of bounds is a very important concept that you should read up about array out of bounds simply says that if you go over your 10 numbers then it is going to write it now let's put some numbers here you can either put a space or you can hit enter And so there's our list of numbers. It says list printed forwards and list printed backwards. So array out of bounds again is, um, is an error that the compiler does not tell us. But if you go over the cap, so when we are, for example, um, outputting numbers and we say less than or equal to, then we go all the way from 0 to 10 when we really don't have the 11th number, which would be uh, 10. So then we are supposed to have gone array out of bounds, and it essentially goes into the memory that's not allocated for our array, and that would be um, a bad runtime error. So, for example, in this, if I make the mistake of going less than or equal to cap, and then I build it, I don't get any error when I build it, but when I run it and I enter my numbers, notice I get this number that's really not what I entered. And so that number in some compilers will cause some systems to crash because we are writing in memory that is not allocated for our array. So array out of bounds is something that you should read up about. And um, that is essentially basic arrays. We will talk more about arrays as we go through the rest of our programs.